In this video, guys, I'm going to make sure you have the best possible settings for the brand new Warzone map, Al Mazra. We have never seen so much customization possible here in the settings, and it is so easy to get confused. So buckle in, you are going to love this settings video. And if you stick around long enough, there is a secret customization menu that you need to see. Okay, let's get straight into the settings menu here. Now, if this controller section doesn't matter to you, Use the timestamps in the description below to skip to the part of the video that you'd like to see. Now, all these on the first page of this controller setting page are the, the, the kind of personal to you, like your button layout, your sensitivity. So none of this top section really matters. If anyone else tries to tell you different, they're wrong. We're going to scroll down, though. Now, these are some of the more meta settings right here. Aim down sight behavior is hold. You, you, you can have this on toggle. A lot of players decide to go for hold. But we keep going down, further down. This is a big one for Warzone. Interact and reload behavior. You want to prioritize interact. This is massive. Or you can have tap. I prefer prioritize, but you can have tap to interact, which means you pick up stuff a lot quicker. A bit like contextual tap back in Warzone 1. Obviously, armor plate behavior, I've got it set to apply one. That way, if I need to run away, especially now that you can't sprint plating up, I can cancel the full one and just put one on instead of having to wait for all three to uh, be applied. Right, we're going to move over to the advanced tab by pressing RB. Now, here, this is quite important. You want aim assist, obviously, on. The aim assist type Black Ops, this is the strongest aim assist setting in the game. I've tested them all. Keep Black Ops on and you will see a major improvement in aim assist. Gyro behavior. This here is uh, it's currently being tested by a couple of top streamers out there. Now, this is in Fortnite. Now, what this used to be is where you could use the controller movements to almost eliminate the recoil. Um, a lot of people frown upon this. I'm not really going to delve into that. So that's off for me. Another big one here, guys, is the aim assist response curve type. Have this set to dynamic. I have tried the other two, and dynamic is the strongest by far. I've got the ADS multiplier for sensitivity set to 0.9. Next set in instant and custom sensitivity per zoom off. Now, a lot of people will change this for their snipers and their times three scopes. This, once again, is personal preference as it's down to actual sensitivity. Um, have a play about with these guys. These will definitely improve your sniping skills and even maybe your long range assault rifle skills with the times two all the way up to times five. Input dead zones, this is kind of hidden in the middle of two menus. So you open this up, left stick, right stick, keep these as they are, have these. These are another personal one. So don't try copy anyone's loadouts or settings, sorry, for these. But one thing I would advise, if you are using triggers and not bumpers to shoot, set these to zero. This will help you shoot that little bit faster and maybe just win you them extra few gunfights. Um, as we go further down, I've got sprint and tack sprint set to toggle. Auto move forward off. That would really annoy me if my character started moving by himself. I like to be in full control at all times. Tactical sprint behavior is on double tap. Grounded mantle, I've got this set to on. So the jump button makes me mantle on nearby obstacles when near. Otherwise, you will not jump over them. You have to jump and then mantle. Automatic airborne mantle, I've got this set to partial, which makes you automatically mantle only if it was going to prevent me from falling. So it, this is going to save a lot of people's lives from fall damage in Warzone 2. I have that set to partial. The ground mantle automatically is set to off. Inverse slide behavior is normal. Plunging underwater, I have that set to movement, so all I have to do is look down and not press a button. Parachute auto deploy. Have this set off, guys. It will trigger sometimes, though, and be set back to on. Um, I don't know why, but obviously you want that off. But please don't forget to pull your shooting game. Now, a lot of these settings at the top right of the screen say only in effect for multiplayer. Now, multiplayer obviously is a bracket, uh, an umbrella blanket for Warzone and multiplayer. So any settings changed there will affect Warzone as well. Don't worry. Go down to sprinting door bashes. Yeah, we want that open so you can kind of bait people by banging the door open and make a quick escape. And all the rest here haven't been changed. Not changed any, except for the quick C4 detonation, which is hidden away at the very bottom. Now, remember when you used to be able to double tap the detonate button or double tap X or square to set it off? 
get that turned on so you can do it again. Once again, all these are personal choice for vehicle behaviors and overlay behaviors. Right, we're going to move on to the graphic setting. Now, some of these will appear on console, some won't. Most of them do, but most of them won't in terms of um, adapter settings and whatnot, because in a PC, we've got our graphics cards, and on console, obviously, you don't have any of that. But listen, a lot of these settings are going to be cross-play anyway, so make sure you listen up. First setting here, this is all personal to your setup. Now, I've tested and tried a couple of different settings. I really struggled with lag in the first few days that the game came out. Managed to play around with it, and I feel like I've got a perfect medium as of right now. So, we're going to go to Aspect Ratio, set to Automatic. V-Sync Gameplay off. V-Sync Menus off. Custom frame rate obviously depends on what monitor you've got. I've got mine set to 300. Even though I can only get to 244 hertz on this monitor, I feel like I just like adding that little bit extra just to see if the PC is even capable of it. When I'm in a menu, I have it set to 60. And when something is out of focus, I've got it set to 30. As we go down, we've got the gamma set to 2.2 sRGB. My brightness is set to 61. I feel like this is perfect. So you're not too blinded by the sun. But also you can see into them dark corners in rooms in Almazra. I've got the game um, window set to off. Constrain mouse. So I can move my mouse off the screen whenever needed. Focus mode is also off. HDR off. Now we're going to move over to the quality tab. Now here is my render resolution. Once again, this is personal to your guys' setup. I've got it set to Fidelity FX CIS. Now, a lot of people have been trying different ones. Personally, I found the Fidelity FX to be the perfect setting for myself. The Anti Analyzing is set to SMAA TX2, N Low, and then 90. Now, listen, this here is where you're going to get the optimal frames for your console or PC. Um, all these here don't make the game look incredible, but they're going to make it run as smooth as possible. Texture resolution set to low. Filter anisotropic. Wow. Set to low. Level of nearby detail set to low. Distance level of detail set to high. That stops the buildings looking like marshmallows from a distance. Clutter, door, clutter draw distance set to long. Particle quality set to high. Quality level set to high. Bullet impact and sprays off. Shader quality high. Tessellation off. Terrain memory max, on demand texture streaming off, streaming quality normal, volumetric quality low, deferred physics quality off, water caustics off, shadow map resolution low, screen space shadows off, spot shadow quality high, spot cache low, particle lighting normal, ambient occlusion off, screen space reflections off. Static reflection quality low, weather grid rep, weather grid volumes off, Nvidia low latency on, depth of field off, world motion blur off, weapon motion blur off, and fill grain set to zero. Okay, let's move on to the view tab. Personal choice once again. This top section field of view for me, I have found perfect to be a 109. I know this is the first time that console players have been able to do Warzone in 120 fov please let me remind you the max isn't always the best trust me find your personal touch mine is 109 and i love that have your ads field of view affected the weapon field of view wide this is going to give you that um the placebo effect that your gun isn't moving as much trust me that one works if you have these settings such as anything else and you change to them you'll notice a big difference in your recoil control First person camera movement set to 50. That is really all that matters on that page there. And now we're going to move into the audio settings. Now, really for the audio for me, all I have is the headphone bass boost, master volume up to 100, music volume down to zero because in the final circle, the devs for some reason thought, you know what, we're going to play some intense music. You don't want that. You want to be able to hear the footsteps, have that set to zero. Um, hit marker volume max, so you know when you've hit somebody. And yeah, voice chat on. Last words, which is def comms. You can have that set to on. Now proximity chat, whether if you're doing crossplay, let's say you've got a PC player 
a, con uh, a PlayStation player, and an Xbox player all on the same team, you're going to have to use game chat. Now, a lot of people have been moaning that it's unfair that PC players can use Discord to talk and not be heard by proximity chat. Well, you could actually turn it off. Now, I know a lot of people have been getting toxic remarks down the mic. What a good thing to do. Turn it off and you won't hear anything. Okay, now we're going to go to the secret menu. A lot of people don't know about this. Okay, readability. Now, here it is tucked away. Color customization. Almost a secret hidden menu. Now, color filter is going to be set to one. You want it set to world, not interface, and not both. Just world. Uh, I've got it set to 75 and 100. Now, down here, all these colors here you can change. Now, I'm going to cycle the image on the right. This gives you a bit of an idea of what it's going to look like in-game. Just so you know what colors are best to choose. Because a lot of people have been saying, I can't see my pings. A lot of people are complaining that the pings are the wrong color. Well, here, you can change it to whatever color you'd like. Now, if you want to copy my color palette, I will show you the exact ones. I've got myself as green, which is that hex color right there on screen. My team is set to blue, which is that hex color right there on screen as well. My party is set to green, a little bit of a lighter green than myself. Now, a party member is people who you've queued up with before you got in the game. So if you're going into a trio match with just two of you, you and your friend will be green, and the other player that it fills into the game will be blue. Enemy, I've got that set to a very dark royal red. There is the hex color for that. Neutral, which is like when I'm pinging somewhere, set to gold. And anywhere contested, also set to that royal red as well. As you can see, these colors pop quite well in all environments on the map, whether it's dark or light. These will definitely help you see your pings and your teammates' pings. If there's any other settings that I may have missed off in this video, guys, be sure to leave a comment down below and I will answer them the best I can. If you've not subbed already, you know what to do. And as always, guys, leave a thumbs up for the video. I will catch you all in the next one.